trapped 
is not water and is not safe to consume. Attempting to enter level zero with others will result in the group being separated until the level is exited. In terms of difficulty, this level is classed as a one. It is safe, secure, with minimal entities. Although it is common to experience hallucinations, which could involve the buzzing sounds from the lighting increasing to a deafening volume, then abrupt silence. The sudden appearance of doors and stairs, hearing human-like speech in an unknown language, or seeing movement in your peripheral vision such as insects crawling underneath the wallpaper, which disappear once you look directly at it. Linear space is altered. You can walk in a straight line and return to your starting point. Retracing your steps will lead to a different set of rooms than the ones already passed through. This and the similarities between rooms makes navigation extremely difficult. Compasses and GPS devices do not work, while radio communications become distorted and unreliable. Despite the fact that this is the primary entrance to the back rooms, contact with other individuals has never been reported here. It is estimated that a large number of wanderers have died on this level, caused by dehydration, starvation, or psychological trauma due to sensory deprivation or isolation. However, no corpses have ever been found. There are no entities known to exist within this level. But if you do see or hear what you believe to be another person, know that it is not human. To exit level zero, you must no clip, which will always result in entering level one. If you walk far enough in any direction, it is sometimes possible to reach the entrance to the manila room. The Manila Room is a small room found in level zero and often acts as a safe point. It is classed as a zero in survival difficulty, being the safest type of room with no entity. Unlike level zero, wanderers can meet freely in the Manila Room, but the room itself is a dead end. It is an isolated square room with thick walls. It has minimal furniture, which can vary, usually with no more than a table, chair, and up to four entrances. Documents from a wanderer group called the Major Explorer Group, or the MEG, can be found on the table giving newcomers vital information for survival. Although these documents do occasionally disappear when the room changes and need to be replaced by the group. The lighting in the Manila room is nearly identical to the rest of level zero and produces the same buzzing noise. However, the brightness of these lights fluctuates, causing occasional periods of darkness. Entities have never been seen in the Manila room. However, knocking and banging noises have been reported coming from within the walls, leading some to believe one or more entities may be present. The loudest noises are reportedly during periods when the lights are turned off. Also found in level zero was a phenomenon known as 
on this level called 
Occasionally appear, but not 
these groups typically range from 9 to 27 members and are referred to as a swindle. Swindles will tend to appear within the surrounding area of an entry point to a level. Bursters. Bursters appear to be somewhat humanoid. They crawl on all fours to move across the walls of the back rooms, with their back legs further stretched out, similar to a dog's legs. On the back of the bursters are many calluses that explode with acidic fluids when agitated or when hunting prey. The bursters will stay mostly docile in a fetal position, but when a living creature comes near, the calluses on its back will burst, causing an explosion of acid to spray into the victim's face. After this, the burster will wait for the acid to kill the victim, which it usually does. If the victim survives, the burster will continue to spray acid until they have succumbed to shock. The burster will then consume the victim. When a burster is hurt by its own acid or by other means, they will begin to harden their skin in a cocoon-like material. These cocoons can be broken with enough force, causing the burster to die. They are also vulnerable to water. Skin Stealers Skin stealers are large, humanoid entities that can wear the skin of their victims as a disguise. Skin stealers are tall, pale yellow humanoids with sunken white eyes. Their blood is translucent and they can mimic human speech, although they cannot understand language, usually staying quiet or just repeating what they hear. Skin stealers will wander aimlessly if they do not need to feed. In this stage, they will not be hostile unless aggravated. When hungry, they will seek out humans wandering alone and will then use their strength to tear them apart with their hands. Their outer layer of flesh is covered with bumps. These bumps pump blood and nutrients into the skin they are wearing make it feel warm and alive, as well as prevent decomposition. It also heals the skin, hiding any cuts that may identify a real human. After around 24 hours, the skin will be digested through the surface of the skin stealer. All of these entities are found in many different levels of the back rooms, including level 2. Next, we will look at level 3. Level 3 is called Electrical Station. It is a series of long, dark, twisting hallways, randomly segmented into rooms. It is extremely loud with the noises of machinery. The hallways are very narrow and enclosed. Some even requiring wanderers to hunch, crawl or walk sideways to pass through them. Just like in level 0, the rooms of level 3 are of similar size and the hallways are long and winding. The walls are comprised of dusty brown bricks, usually covered in copper pipes and mechanical components. The floors are made of an even dustier, grey, tiled floor, while the ceiling is made entirely from metal. There are a number of entrances into Level 3, such as some unlocked doors in Level 2, elevators on Level 4 and 5, and entering bunkers on Level 10 can sometimes lead to Level 3. Level 3 is one of the larger levels in the back rooms, being millions of square miles in area. It is rare that you will come across other fellow wanderers on this level. It is 
I'm 
Of unexplained disappearances. 
must they continuously beg any passerby to flip the switch? For any wanderers who discovers this place, if it exists, you're advised not to flip the light switch. Mimicry Mimicry is a community of about four people who claim to have adapted to the darkness of level six. Each of these unknown individuals has proven to somehow be able to mimic any sound they hear perfectly, including voices. They are to be avoided as much as possible, as they have become aware of the threat they pose. Entrances and exits. You can access level 6 through the boiler room in level 5. No other entrances have yet been discovered. Explorers are advised to use the boiler room to make frequent returns to avoid the effects of staying too long in level 6. If you go far enough into level 6, it can lead to a stairwell down to level 7. The easiest way to find the stairwell is to listen for the faint sound of ocean waves. However, be aware that taking a wrong turn at any point in between may block access to level 7 and even the entrance back to level 5. Level 7 Level 7 is called the Lassophobia. The meaning of the Lassophobia is the persistent and intense fear of deep bodies of water, such as the oceans or lakes. As the name suggests, level 7 is a vast ocean that seems to go on infinitely in all directions. There is no fixed lighting, only a dim natural light is present. The survival difficulty is classed as a level 4. It is unsafe, unsecure, with a medium entity count. Exploring this ocean is very dangerous and requires a lot of preparation. Because of this, not much is known about level 7. It is understood to be composed of two rooms. The entrance room and the room containing the ocean itself, with a high concrete ceiling suspended above the water. The entrance room seems to be the most easily accessible entry point into level 7. It is found directly at the bottom of the stairs from level 6. This is the only known entrance to level 7. Although there are rumours of a possible entrance through a bottle on the floor of level 8. This entrance room is the most habitable area of the level and should be used as a base for those daring to explore the ocean. The entrance room is fully furnished with a bookcase against the left wall containing several books of unknown origin. There is a small coffee table, a single chair, and a fluorescent ceiling lamp. The carpeted floor is covered with a shallow layer of water, no deeper than a puddle. Across the room, from the staircase which leads to level 6, is the doorway to the ocean. Any explorers of level 7 should be aware that the center of gravity within the entrance room is different to that of the rest of the level. The entrance room appears to be built sideways into the concrete ceiling, with the door opening up directly above the water from a top-down perspective. Anything directly in front of the open doorway will have its gravity forcibly adjusted to that of the ocean which has led several unprepared wanderers to fall through the doorway into the water below. The majority of level 7 is composed of the ocean. The door to the entrance room is located on a fixed spot on the concrete ceiling, roughly 4.5 meters above the surface of the water. The water surrounding the entrance is barren, Although wanderers travelling far enough across the surface have discovered islands made of an unknown rock substance, which 
autonomously uninhabited. It is thought that the entire level is almost completely devoid of life. The water is cold, but it is not lethal, except in cases of long-term exposure. The air above the surface contains an unknown substance that allows those who breathe it to hold their breath for considerable amounts of time. These two factors make the conditions somewhat manageable even without diving gear. There are a few known explored areas beneath the ocean that have been categorized by the varying amounts of light. First, there is the daylight zone. The daylight zone is the most well-illuminated part of the ocean in level 7 testing of the area just under the water surface. Little else can be said about this zone as it is the most empty area of the ocean. The Twilight Zone The Twilight Zone is located just below the Daylight Zone, roughly one kilometer below the surface. The Twilight Zone is significantly darker and colder. This zone contains loose bones and scraps of rusted metal, as well as the first sightings of skeletal remains. These skeletons are often humanoid, with noticeable differences, including much larger jaws, containing long, sharp teeth, and legs ending in what seems to be flippers. Several skeletons of large, fish-like creatures have also been spotted, many of which are covered in bite and scratch marks. The water pressure is said to be quite strong by this point, but it appears that throughout the ocean, the pressure is never great enough to crush the human skeleton. Explorers who have traveled this far down are advised to leave as quickly as possible. The Midnight Zone The Midnight Zone is estimated at around 3 kilometers below the Twilight Zone. The Midnight Zone is completely dark. Many more skeletons have been found within this area of the ocean. There have been reports of massive fish-like skeletons in this zone, but these creatures have been described by witnesses as incomprehensible. The Abyss Any depth below 7 kilometers from the surface is considered to be too dangerous to explore. The Abyss is scattered with mountainous piles of tar and rock. There is a steady bubbling coming from an unknown source below. This zone is also densely populated by the same humanoid-looking skeletons, most of which have been eroded by the intense pressure. Little else is known about these depths of the waters. Rumors say there is a cave entrance in one of the underwater mountains, which will lead to level 8. The depth of level 7 is unknown and cannot be measured. Fragments of synthetic fibers found in the deeper zones suggest the ocean floor is carpeted. Entities for many years, Level 7 was believed to have only one entity, the thing on Level 7. But another entity has since been discovered. The thing on Level 7 has only been seen by a few travelers. It appears to be the only one of its kind, and is quite intelligent. It is a massive, black, scaly, fish-like creature with a large mouth. It reportedly hunts from movement, therefore staying still until it has passed you may be the best survival strategy. If you have been spotted, it will then start to circle victims, similar to that of a shark. The second entity goes by the name Tiny. Tiny is a humanoid entity standing at around two and a half meters tall. This entity can reach swimming speeds of up to 80 miles per hour. Tiny is always seen wearing the skin of what appears to be another fish-like entity. Despite his appearance, Tiny is hostile. Conversations with Tiny should be carried out from the safety 
the transporter will walk towards the wanderer and grab their shoulders. It seems that what happens next is random. Either you die, or, according to many survivors, you're thrown through a void and will land in a different level. It's unknown whether you could be transported anywhere else by these entities. Should a transporter be spotted, try to go the opposite way to where it's facing, although this may not be possible. Paralyze. Paralyze are a very small, snake-like parasite, similar to a garter snake. You cannot hear them as they are extremely stealthy. This entity has strong psychic powers that will manipulate your mind causing you to lie, and it lures the victim into a trap. When the entity spots a wanderer, it will quietly slither towards them. It proceeds to crawl into their ear and make its way to the brain. The victim won't feel anything at all. The entity will take control of them in a three-stage process. The first stage is where the host will start to lie and deceive people without them knowing. This will last for a few weeks. In the second stage, the entity will detach from your brain, travel around your body and under your skin. Using its abilities, it will go through every functional part of your body and will take control of it. The third and final stage is where the victim can no longer control their own body. The entity will live in the body until it is deceased, and then we use it to lay its eggs in and create new paralyzed. To prevent becoming invested, you should keep watch of your fellow wanderers and cover your ears. If in stage one of the control process, the wanderer may be saved by pouring an almond water into the ear. Revix. Revix are characterized by their many legs and ability to burrow into the ground. These creatures should be considered very dangerous. Revix will burrow into the ground for several weeks at a time, waiting for wanderers or other entities to walk over them. The ground will eventually heal and look as it did before. After five to ten seconds of standing on that ground, it will begin to break. The Reviuk will break out of the floor and grab its victim, pulling them back underneath. What happens at this point is unknown, although some skeletal remains have been found. It is assumed the Wanderer will suffocate while underground, and the Entity will discard their remains. The exact physical appearance of a Reviuk is not clear, as they spend most of their existence underground. Witnesses reported them to have large, muscular arms in the front of the body, and three small legs in the back, which they used to burrow quickly into the ground. The head has several black, beady eyes, and a small, tube-like mouth. To avoid this entity, listen for vibrating sounds on the ground. That is likely to be where their trap is. You should also keep a weapon on hand, because it's possible to kill them if you're fast enough. The windows. Windows tend to appear in level 1 or 2, but can also appear in level 8's cave walls. The window has a figure inside. If it spots you, it will start by pointing at you. You'll hear voices whispering for you to enter the window. Once close enough, the entity inside will grab you and pull you in, even if the window seems to be closed. It is rumored that on the other side is just an empty void. These windows can come in many different shapes and sizes, and the same goes for the shadowy figure behind them, although they always look human. It is safest to avoid any and all windows, and do not trust anyone who is talking to you from behind one. The arachnids of level 8 also reside here. These entities are large, venomous spiders. Level 8 is completely infected with spider-like creatures, but not all are hostile right away. It would help to bring a flashlight and almond water with you. The flashlight will allow you to see any spiders that may be in your way.
is evidence to suggest that they supplied other communities with unique materials found deep within level 8. These minerals appear to have been used to create makeshift weapons. It is unclear what happened to the entities or the town, and there have been no signs of life within its walls. Exits To exit the level, find a rare group of small, silvery passages to go to level 75. Vents can be found in some areas that can lead to level 2, but this is not advised due to the crawlers. Entering the distilled water pools has been rumored to drag you back to level 7. Entering the tar pits in level 8 can occasionally pull you into level 91, if you are lucky enough to survive. This is also not advised. No clipping through a corner of level 8 can bring you to level 93. No clipping through the ceiling has a small chance to lead into level 205. Finding random sets of old televisions and no clipping through them will lead you to level 104. And you may randomly fall through the floor, ending up in level 9, or less commonly, level 69. And now we are on level 9, the suburbs. Level 9 takes the form of an infinite suburban area at midnight. The suburban houses vary in design and size, and each are different. Although sometimes you may spot two houses near each other that look the same. Entrances. To enter this level, you can fall through the floor at random points in level 8. This is the main method of entering for most wanderers. Other ways include crawling up the sewer grate in level 34, go through one of the many doors inside level 92, however you could end up in other levels. Use the revolving door in level 40, open the yellow arcade cabinet in level 20, Enter one of the doors in level 54. Break the window in level 87. Or go through the backyard of level 104. The survival difficulty here is rated a class 5. Unsafe, unsecure, and entity infested. The level 9 houses appear to be furnished and fairly new, although there is no power source for the lighting systems to work. Some houses are empty, others contain many useful objects such as pockets. Pockets or object 51 refers to small artifacts of crystal and metal that grant access to dimensional pockets acting as a portable storage for wanderers. Object 51 often takes the appearance of jewelry such as rings, earrings, bracelets and necklaces. They usually contain a gemstone such as amber or opal, which is known as the pocket stone. While in possession of Object 51, wanderers will have the ability store non-living stationary matter within the vicinity. Pocketed items seem to suddenly disappear, but will reappear at the mental command of the user. Most users need direct contact with the target matter in order to store it, but experienced pocket users are able to do so remotely. 
access an infinite or near infinite storage capacity. Pockets are relatively safe to use, as long as you do not manipulate it in a way that could be dangerous, such as materializing a heavy object above yourself. Much of the danger associated with pockets occur during discovery. Owners without the protection of a group often find themselves targeted and their pockets stolen. It is advised to conceal your pocket at all times and only use it when alone or in the company of allies. While not difficult to find, Object 51 has produced a mountain of corpses in exchange for every pocket successfully taken. Pockets are found in houses throughout level 9 suburban area, within safes, jewelry boxes, vaults, and display cases. These particular houses have illuminated windows in a range of different colors, such as blue or green. Pockets found outside level 9 are almost unheard of. However, there are rumors that jewelry worn by wanderers will turn into pockets upon entering the back rooms. Recovering a pocket is very risky. It's recommended to do so in groups of three for the best chance of success. The escape route must be planned before attempting to take a pocket. Ideal escapes are through the grass fields leading to level 10, or via playgrounds leading to level 283. Distance to the exit point should never be further than one mile from the point of acquisition, and all team members must be capable of independently navigating to the exit within 8 minutes. If you're wondering how fast you have to run, the average runner can run one mile in about nine or ten minutes. So the closer you are to the exit, the higher your chance of escaping. Each group should have a designated roles of thief, lookout, and support. The thief is responsible for entering the house as discreetly as possible and taking the object. Brute force, such as breaking down doors or shattering windows, is not advised. The lookout is responsible for monitoring entity activity. The support must be capable of taking either of these roles. Upon acquiring a pocket, entities named the Neighborhood Watch will be alerted and will assemble to the area to eliminate intruders. All team members must run to the exit as quickly as possible. Do not attempt to hide. Should the thief become incapacitated, the support must take the pocket and continue running. Should the support become incapacitated, the lookout must take the pocket and continue running. A recovery is successful only when level 9 is exited, at which point the pursuit will cease. Those in possession of a pocket should not enter level 9 under any circumstance. Back to level 9. The furniture of level 9 houses is what a person would expect from a normal house. Sofas, television, beds, refrigerators. Items that require power do not work. Some of these houses are furnished yards at the back of the house. When traveling far enough, sometimes you can find two houses strangely clipped inside of each other. The asphalt road is cold and wet, with puddles in some spots. The stone sidewalks seem normal. Any walkway that lead to the grass fields will lead to level 9.1. Wandering off the walkway into the fields will usually lead to level 10. The street lamps 
environment starts to slowly change, and you must be purposely following the signs to enter level 11. There are many other ways, such as traveling in the metro, walking towards the city in the distance of level 11.1, looking up in the sky at the top layer of level 17 for a long time, entering an orange arcade cabinet in level 25, walking outside the train in level 61 while stationary, Finding a long road in level 66. Finding a tunnel in level 69. Entering an airlock in level 78. Opening particular doors from level 87. Entering a trash can in level 122. Doors that have a chance of leading to level 11 include those in level 88. Level 34, level 40, level 95, level 113, level 119, and level 92. The survival difficulty is a class 1. Like level 10, it seems safe, secure, and has minimal entities. Facelings and hounds are the only frequently spawning entities here. A strange phenomenon named the Eleven Effect makes the entity's regular behavior change to make them act as if they were normal pedestrians and dogs. This effect causes the entity to interact with wanderers in an effort of communication. Other entities include death moths, crawlers, and smilers, although these are almost impossible to find. Two entities exclusive to level 11 are Argos and the human entity Ralph. Argos or entity 74 usually stays in the headquarters building, but once a hunt begins, he will chase his prey to any level or room. Argos has not been observed so far by any alive wanderer. The only known subjects with direct contact have disappeared. The information has been collected from various files that make reference to him. For this reason, this entity may be overestimated or underestimated. Argos has the appearance of a tall humanoid who wears tactical clothing under a ragged black cloak wields a strange looking spear. The origin of this entity, like many others, is unknown, although it's estimated that he dates back to at least five centuries. However, even then he already possessed a large amount of knowledge about the back rooms. Testimonies and evidence about his existence were always scarce which is why it was thought that Argos was a legend created by the Eyes of Argos, a group on level 11. Argos can move freely throughout the back rooms that can be found at almost all levels. Argos is the self-proclaimed judge of the back rooms. Due to this, he has taken the quest together with his subordinates to hunt down all sinners. He is brutal, and so far, all of his known prey have been punished. He is known to act according to a code called the Law, which is believed to have been written by himself. When someone performs a truly terrible act, Argos goes hunting to kill or punish the target. This also means that Argos cannot kill someone who is innocent, according to the Law. Regarding his physical capabilities, he has increased stamina, speed, and strength, as well as strategic knowledge and intelligence. Some reports talk about how his wounds healed faster than they should. There is also reports of a true vision, 
that allows him to see through deceptions and hallucinations. One MEG member described it as if thousands of eyes were watching him. It is unknown if this ability has something to do with how Argos is able to detect sinners, although that is the current theory. Once you have been targeted by Argos, there is not much you can do but run. If you are innocent, then you have no need to worry. Radio Backroom Studio Ralph is found in the Radio Backroom Studio, which has a survival difficulty of zero. You can enter this room through different levels. The easiest way is by finding a radio station in level 11, but you can also enter by finding a door that says Radio Back Rooms in level 4 and level 21. Radio Back Rooms is the official radio channel in the Back Rooms. It is directed by Ralph, the unique entity of this room. The room looks like an average, fully equipped radio studio. It's one of the safest rooms. Any hostile creature, entity or human that tries to enter will be immediately killed by Ralph's shotgun. This room is also connected to a guest room where people are supposed to wait until it's their turn on the radio show. This room includes three armchairs, a coffee table, an infinite coffee machine, and a vending machine. Ralph has been seen refilling the machine. It's not known where he gets his supplies. Ralph is the only known entity that lives here. He has the appearance of a normal middle-aged man. It seems that he does not need to sleep or eat. He rarely talks about his past. Some people have said his gaze produces an indescribable calm. He likes talking with people, and if you are there at the right time, you can be added as a special guest in his show, Talking with Ralph. He also likes coffee, but rarely drinks because he doesn't have any milk. One wanderer reported that Ralph offered to give him some juicy secrets about the back rooms in exchange for some milk. Due to this, it is believed that Ralph can be an important information trader. About the radio channel, Ralph says this channel broadcasts 29 hours a day, 456 days a year. It's unknown if this phrase is literal or a joke. The channel has several programs, including Level of the Day, Talking with Ralph, and Survival 101. In between the programs, Ralph usually puts on music. This is the best time to talk to him. You can tune into radio backrooms in every level although some levels may have interferences. There are reports of radio backrooms suddenly playing on random devices, even if they have no battery or are not connected to power. This has killed at least one person by a heart attack. To exit, just use the same door that you used to enter. This will always lead to level 11, regardless of how you entered. Level 11, Bases and Communities. There are many groups there. These are some of the more notable ones. The MEG, Major Explorer Group, Base Beta. This is the fourth base of the MEG. It is fairly new and still being organized. The MEG team, Secure Security is assigned to stay in level 11 while construction is ongoing. The Eyes of Argos The Eyes of Argos reside in the building known as the Headquarters. Their group mission is focused on serving justice and creating law within the back rooms. It's a safe place to stay unless you have sinned, in which case do not approach. Camp Amber, level 11 outpost. This group usually welcomes newcomers and teaches them about the back rooms. This is an outpost and doesn't have a fixed point. They often move around to help others. Insurrection Station 7. 
space is presumed to have a population of over 800. The area surrounding the station is heavily patrolled by armed guards. They are self-sufficient, but open to trade. Entry is denied to all members of the MEG. Homely Hotel This group has a running hotel service in one of the hotel buildings. This is their second base, with their original one in level 5. They are open to new wanderers to stay and have an active food and room service to help keep you safe. Jerry's Salvation This outpost is composed of about 40 members from the followers of Jerry. It was created as a scavenger team for finding and stealing items to take back to the rest of Jerry's followers. They can be friendly unless you insult Jerry, in which case he will be violently attacked. Malt Mart Malt Mart is a group of 28 people that run stores around the level, working 24 hours a day to serve wanderers. They usually gather items from other unused buildings or are resupplied by the BNDG. The total number of people on this level is not known, but it's thought to be around 12,000. Most wanderers will stick around the center of level 11, and you will not see many elsewhere. Exits As with entrances, there are many ways to exit level 11. These are a few ways. Some buildings have reportedly led to level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, and level 196. Certain windows can lead to level 12. Entering a specific apartment building goes to level 13. Finding a conservatory building to enter level 30. Finding a plushie of an entity and then finding a carnival will bring you to level 32. Finding a mall will bring you to level 33. Entering a sewer grate can lead you to level 34. There is an airport between level 11 and level 9. Enter it to be transported to level 36. Finding a large park and laying on the grass for a few hours will bring you to level 37. A small building with the sign sewage will bring you to level 41. Entering a taxi car will have a chance to bring you to level 43. Finding a small blue building and entering the igloo inside will lead to level 47. Find a brown bricked building which says M. David High School will bring you to level 52. Going down into a subway tunnel can sometimes lead to level 59. If you enter any laundromat building, you'll be transported to level 60. A mansion can take you to level 82. A strange metal door will lead to level 98. A cathedral will bring you to level 105. Enter a hotel building labeled De Fraton City Hotel enter level 171. No clip through a billboard about a new food store to enter level 176. Entering a Machia house in the distance will lead to level 178. Climb a chain link fence near some open land to go to level 205. Walking five miles east of the MEG base takes you to level 275. Finding a small abandoned area with sand everywhere and a small wooden building will lead you to 
positive level usually consists of you, the space and something out of the corner of your eye. It could be another explorer, it could be a hostile entity, it could be your imagination. If you negative levels behave like positive levels, but the further in you go, the more surreal and trippy elements you might encounter. The mentality in the negatives is more situational or psychological. Some situations are too real for comfort. Most entities here represent the complicated and chaotic nature of the human condition. The preservation of your sanity is not guaranteed, making you an unreliable resource when you recount your experience here assuming you survived. You might have seen these places in your nightmares. Perhaps this place is protecting you from the actual nightmare. Level negative zero. The survival difficulty is pending. Safety is undetermined, unsecured, and the presence of entities is also undetermined. Level negative zero is theorized to be the first negative level of the back rooms. Not much is known about this level. It appears that most data character has been erased. Entrances. So far, this level has only been reached through attempts to access level zero from another level. We know the layout of this level appears to have been copied from level zero, although with distinct visual abnormalities. These visuals can range from vibrant pink and black checkerboard planes to areas of complete visual noise. There are similarities to level zero, particularly the absence of life. You may hear a ticking clock or winding gears. Entities. Entities are thought to reside here, although it is not known what or how dangerous they might be. It seems they are intelligent. They wrote the following message. Level negative zero is the one true level of the back rooms. We have been given a gift. A country without a flag. A kingdom with no monarch. What have they told you about us? Did they tell you our name? We are here. Don't forget us. We haven't forgotten you. Revel in our being. Join our becoming. Communities and outposts. There are no known communities or outposts on this level. Exit. To leave level negative zero. You need to just say a certain phrase. Unfortunately, the phrase is not known due to the information becoming distorted and instead being replaced with the following message. We can't let you leave. We won't let you leave. A new wanderer has come to learn. What drives this curiosity? What have they hidden from you? No matter, we shall grant you a gift. A truly wonderful gift. Come with us, child. Shed your mortal coil. Do not be afraid. Welcome to your new home. Level negative one. Level negative one is a presumably infinite hallway that has doors on either side. The level consists of white painted walls and numerous black doors. Each door leads to a few other known levels. The survival difficulty is a class 2. It is unsafe, secure with a low entity count. Entrances. To enter, break a wall in level 0, or no clip through any dark looking wall. While inside this level, you will no longer hear the hum noise of level zero. Instead, you will hear a quiet piano in the distance. The source of this sound is unknown. 
statues on top of them. Each of those empty pedestals have a bronze placard reading the Shavik. A few reports mentioned that a fifth area exists that was described as a hotel lobby. Not much information is known as wanderers that have entered it can't seem to describe the area any further. This could be a different level, possibly the same area described in level 5 as the lobby room. Bases and communities. It is very difficult to create a group within level negative 2, although the MEG are trying to find a way to set up a base in the abyss. Exits. To exit, find a set of stairs, which will lead to level 14. In all areas above the pool, you can find entrances to level negative 3. Walking across the abyss can sometimes take you to level 64. Next in our back room series is level 12, Matrix. Level 12 possesses an unusual effect where it seems to completely censor itself. Any attempts to record or photograph level 12 will result in either a blank white image or a mass of static noise. When uploaded to another device, footage will convert into an empty screen. It's unknown how this change occurs. Any information included with footage or image data, such as a file name, is also censored. Level 12's environment is one of the most basic. It's a small, brightly lit white room containing only a table, chair, and an adjacent locked door. Many wanderers report having entered and exited the level, however the exact method is rarely remembered. So far, no entity sightings have been reported. It has a survival difficulty of class zero. An MEG member named Harris reported the following. Level 12 extends for longer than we originally thought. The structure of this level has changed slightly. It's no longer a room, it's become an infinite white abyss. We've started finding random objects and furniture. All old, beaten up. Lamps, chairs, tables and drawers. Some are halfway through the floor. This place seems to be messing with our heads. Memories have gotten all foggy. It doesn't seem to be permanent, but I'll wager it can get much worse. Frankie, she's not right anymore. I don't want to lose myself in here. It's kind of hard to communicate properly with people in level 12. As soon as the effects wear off, you realize just how bad the mental fogginess is. In the main area, there's some sort of hole under the table. We can't access it right now. Seems like the table won't move. We found similar doors, like the door in the main area out here. It brings you back there if you walk through them. After a lot of trial and error, we have finally found a way out. Seems like the only reliable way to exit involves a series 
asked, can you describe the level that you ended up in? They answered, you've seen it already in your mind's eye. You don't need me to tell you again. The interviewer asked, were you able to identify any of these bodies? They answer, I saw everyone I know and everyone I have ever known, all beckoning me to come closer. The interviewer asks, what do you mean by psychological effects? They answer, the voices sang beautifully in the night, but when I left, I couldn't hear them, and without them, I was lost. Next is level 15, Futuristic Walls. As the name suggests, level 15 is a series of futuristic looking hallways, with a few areas that are pitch black. The sounds of engines can be heard far away. These noises are coming from machines that are located in large rooms with partial glass walls, closed off by reinforced metal doors. These machines range from the size of a laptop to massive, immeasurable dimensions, and the noises they emit don't seem to affected by their size. Some machines have clear tasks, such as producing steel rods, but most don't seem to have a recognizable one, with some not having any function at all. Rarely, you may find a room that contains machines that have been destroyed. They seem to have either exploded or been broken. Explosions are probably caused by lack of maintenance. The glass on the wall of these rooms appears to have been shattered, but not broken. It may be composed similarly to laminated glass. The level is thought to be infinite. So far, it has been clarified to cover a surface area of at least 6,080. Squared. The rooms and hallways are made out of white or grey concrete, with beams of white steel lining up against the walls and ceilings. Long symbols are inscribed on the beams. Large lights on the walls, ceilings and ground produce an eerie glow. Dried out blood and bodily fluids are seen in some areas, alongside corpses. These bodies seem human. They are dressed in lab coats. The cause of death looks to be from violent fighting, using various weapons. Makeshift knives and spears can be found, alongside some corpses. But no firearms have yet been discovered even though some bodies have gunshot wounds. It's estimated they have been here for several months, or even years. Several kinds of rooms can be found in this place. Besides the engine rooms, other ones exist, such as laboratories, dormitories, kitchens, and control rooms, as well as storage containing food, water, and other types of equipment. Almond water cannot be found here. The majority of these rooms are empty without furniture, while others have many bodies. Computers can be accessed and can connect to the ILN, the interlevel network, which is the back room's equivalent of internet. These computers are running on unknown versions of Linux called Avalon 2.4. They host files that appear to be written in an unknown language. Some of these files are journals, mails, studies, or manuals about the engines, machines, and their tasks. The survival difficulty is a class zero. No entities have been discovered, however numerous corpses 
shot by itself and hasn't opened since. That wanderer who we will call Eric has been stuck in this level ever since. In the two years that Eric has been there, he explored some of it. Using the computers, he was able to contact groups outside of this level and provide data. In the first year, he estimated to have covered around 6,080 kilometers squared. The second year was dedicated to looking into the files and technology, but unfortunately an exit has still not been found. He is the only known wanderer to be living here. Bases and communities. The only known base on this level is Eric's set up inside a large control room. He's the only known wanderer to be here. Evidence of other camps have been found, but they were all abandoned and seem to have been made by those deceased on this level. Entrances and exits. It is extremely hard to get into and out of level 15. Only one way was recorded the way Eric came in. A large wall that looked as if it was from level 15 appeared inside level 10. It stretched out into the distance without a visible end. Eric discovered a door which led him into level 15. The wall and door disappeared two days later, trapping him inside level 15. Some computer files found by information. This led to a few theories of what happened. The first theory is that level 15 used to be a space station and that these objects were moving around it. However, this theory leaves a lot of questions about what these moving objects are and why they are being highlighted in such a way. A second theory attempts to link this radar with the event of the wall in level 10. The objects displayed on the screen are levels. The green lines are connections that wanderers can use to travel across these levels, either by no clipping or through doors which will allow access to a new place. When the shapes overlap, it means that two levels have collided, resulting in these levels no clipping into each other, making parts of each level appear inside one another. This theory was supported when Eric was able to find a possible exit that could be represented in the radar by the green line going from the center onto the small circle on the right side. It seems that this green line corresponds to a strange room that was found two hours away from his control room. It looked identical to the ones that contain engines, but it had notable differences. All of the engines were missing here. There was a door frame at the back that appears to lead into an empty void, looking something like a night sky. A large sphere of clear blue light can be seen in its center. While there seems to be a way to enter a new, undocumented level, it is too risky to attempt exploring it. Eric was advised to wait for another event where level 15 could be accessed from somewhere else that was known, so he could escape this level securely. Level 16, Altered Topography. This level has a rapidly changing terrain, altering itself in unknown intervals. Studying this level is difficult as its properties change with every environmental shift. Previous entries recorded it to be a rainforest, but its current 
room of 
seems to 
Artifacts that resemble historical artifacts from the front room. 
Spot. 
Around 20 minus 
some other type of currency. Activating a machine is rather easy. After inserting your coin, all you have to do is try to play the game, which will take you to the level the cabinet is connected to. Each time I've done this, there has been an arcade behind me. Though each arcade I've seen has clearly been damaged and exposed to the elements, they still work decently. This level connects to many, many others. I did not make these, but I feel that someone most likely did. My theory is there was some big group or organization here once, and I bet they used this level as a method of traveling to their bases. The arcade cabinet seemed to resemble those of the early to mid 1980s. The machines that do work, which is about one in every 1500 machines, will take their current user to a predetermined level of the bank room. As mentioned by the Wanderer, simply by inserting a quarter into these cabinets and interacting with them, the user will be teleported into another level. Quarters can easily be found within boxes around the level. This trip is not a one-sided connection. Another arcade machine will always be either behind the Wanderer or within around 100 feet of their current position. However, perhaps due to time, the functionality of them can be irregular. The arcade tethered to level 10, for example, has since stopped working because of water damage. There are no known bases, communities, or outposts on this level. Entrances and exits. Entrances and exits are identical, since arcade machines tethered to certain levels can be used to both enter and exit level 25. However, there is a unique entrance to level 25. It's a single door resembling a janitor's closet that can occasionally be spotted in isolated small rooms of level 4. Working arcade machines have been known to transport to and from the following levels. Level 0, Level 5, Level 9, Level 11, Level 19, Level 24, Level 29, Level 37, Level 50, level 90, level 108, level 120, level 141, level 150, level 165, level 188, level 201, level 700. Many 
is volatile and may spontaneously combust. Due to this property, some people have used liquid pain as a weapon by throwing the solid form at targets. Exposure to liquid pain causes a number of symptoms, beginning with a burning point of contact, then itchy skin and a rise in body temperature. This is followed by intense stabbing pains within the stomach, resulting from an acidic corrosion of the stomach lining and intestines. The pain then spreads throughout the entire body. Veins and arteries are ruptured, causing internal bleeding and then death. On rare occasions, the victim will spontaneously combust. If treated with enough almond water, before the stabbing pains reach the entire body, the chance of survival is high. Most or all symptoms will be cured in a few hours, and all damage will eventually reverse itself. However, if the stabbing pain reaches the whole body, the victim is past the point of no return and should be quarantined away from others. Another item is Smiler Exterminator. Smiler Exterminators are small spray bottles of fluid used to escape from smilers. When sprayed, it has the special ability of repelling a smiler for approximately one minute. After one minute has passed, the smiler will return to its original position. This is only effective against smilers. The next item is lamps. Lamps are made by a group called Backrooms Robotics and sold in bulk to the MEG, who then distribute them throughout the lower levels. Their purpose is to provide light to wanderers. However, these lamps should not be confused with standard lamps found in the back rooms. These are specially made with a few key properties. Lamps are built with functional legs and can move, even though they were not programmed to do so. This property was given to it by the back rooms. They have an awareness of surroundings and the ability to detect nearby 
Thank you. 
closing your eyes while inside it. Wanderers should not climb the other waterfall tunnel. It leads to nowhere. Level 28, also known as Stormstone Keep. Level 28 is known for its only landmark named Stormstone Keep. It closely resembles the front rooms with a few major differences. Any wonder Yes. Hey. 
Bye. 
recent revisions, it is now classed as Aleph, meaning it is unsafe, causes time dilation, and contains undocumented entities. The entities known to appear are the exclusive memory lurkers. Occasional smiler, wormlings, and unconfirmed sightings of the birds. The birds are flocks of small bird like entities that hunt in groups. The birds are five to seven inches long and resemble crudely drawn birds. It has been shown that light passes through the bodies of the birds. They migrate frequently and can blend into their environment by mimicking the appearance of objects. The birds will remain hidden and do not react until they are approached. When an individual gets within 15 feet of them, they will begin to make a shrill noise that will induce a hypnotic state where the individual will lose control of their body and involuntarily walk towards the birds. They may also experience auditory hallucinations. When an individual is lured into the colony, the birds will start to latch onto them and eat at their skin until it reaches the bone. Although they do not have a visible mouth, if targeted by the birds, it is advised to shine any available light at them, as this will cause them temporary blindness. Bases and communities. There are no known bases or communities on this level anymore. At one point, an outpost did seem to exist, but was destroyed by the memory workers. In an updated file, it was reported that there are actually only two entities on this level. Memory lurkers and the level itself. Level 30 is determined to be an unknown level with two forms. It's a false form controlled by the level itself and it's undiscovered true form. The false form is the one we have mentioned within the skybox. This false form is shown to wanderers via the memory workers. These entities can disguise the mind, making it seem like a typical level. Memory workers can even kill you still alive. Level 30's true form is completely unknown and may be incomprehensible to humans. All we know is that it exists and will kill you if you make this sudden realization that everything here is fake. Level 30 an entity itself and seems to run the entire 
Wonder of her. 
Soul is bound. 
school services. An unknown wanderer reportedly traveled a thousand miles in. The level was described at that point to have twenty foot high weeds and black voids where the walls once were. Before he could go any further, he was chased back by a horde of extremely aggressive entities. Entrances to access level 33, entering a shopping mall in level 11, can sometimes take you. Alternatively, go upstairs in level.
Okay. 
not known where those who disappeared would end up, or what happened to them after. From the collective experiences of those who eventually were found, it was then understood that the period of darkness that occurred while no clipping was an empty extraspatial plane. Those who do not return after clipping through a surface likely did not gain enough momentum to travel from the void to the intended location, and they will continue to fall in the void without end. How to exit the void remains unclear. Individuals who have returned after falling through the void for multiple hours or more will claim they simply fell into another level from above. This explanation that levels are all located somewhere in the void would disprove the belief that they are all located in different planes of reality and are instead located at a measurable distance from one another. Depending on the initial conditions of a successful no-clip, the correct method of phasing through a solid surface can often be difficult to determine, requiring knowledge such as the intended exit point in order to time the jump and its angle. Furthermore, it is unknown how long a clip remains stable. In rare instances, wanderers have severely misjudged their timing, leaving them attached to the surface, or even separating the wanderer into multiple sections back to level 34 bases and communities. Roanoke. Roanoke is a colony located in a junction room consisting of Englishmen and Native Americans. In the front rooms, Roanoke was established in 1585 before they disappeared. While it is not clear what happened to them, it is said that Roanoke ended up no clipping into the back rooms after attempting a ritual to summon gods. They have since decided to stay in level 34. Sewer Rats The Sewer Rats was a colony of 16 people that had become deluded into behaving like front rooms sewer rats, presumably due to isolation and severe mental distress. Before this behavior began, the colony acted as an MEG base that conducted research on level 34. The colony disbanded after a 23 magnitude earthquake killed seven of the members. Entrances Known entrances to level 34 include 
Barrier 
distance, but now that we've been seen, the ventilation system of level 36 is complex, stretching out as far as the airport terminal goes, and twisting in random directions. The size of the vent large enough for a person to crawl through, although they contain fans inside, which constantly spin fast and might block certain parts. The vent is often used as a shortcut through the level. The system lacks any light. So bringing a light source is recommended if traveling this way. Entities may also crawl inside these vents. If you hear sounds hitting the steel, it may be an entity lurking inside. If wanderers venture deep into level 36, they will eventually reach the level's limits, where the boundaries become absent, producing an unknown static force. Wanderers here will begin to feel unsettled as the place becomes more and more unstable and glitchy should they travel any further. Many have reported the deeper portions of level 36 to become another part of an ethereal labyrinth. The architecture becomes more erratic and strange to the point that it has no resemblance to an airport. Although this location can be reached by traveling a great distance from the entry point in level 36, some wanderers have unintentionally ended up in this area by no clipping from an unstable or corrupted level. The upper part of the outside area has been seen to glitch with something resembling the border between the level and an unknown corrupted location. It is thought the sky could possibly be the border to many other levels. A theory among wanderers claims that level 36 might be evidence that the back rooms are genuinely infinite, without a chance of escaping back into the real world. Others think the back rooms, and perhaps the front room, are part of an unidentified simulation whose origin is unknown. Others, however, claim that the exit leading to the front rooms is located at the furthest section of level 36. However, there has yet of anybody finding this supposed exit. The deeper portion of the level can produce hallucinations. Additionally, the level has an irreversible effect on any gadgets brought to these limits, which also affects files and databases inside the devices. 
certain sections of these levels end up overlapping, existing inside one conjoined area, as well as having all the physical properties of the previous 38 levels. This level also shares some of the same effects as these levels. This includes the intense darkness in level 6, the mold found in level 28, and the decay found in the outer sections of level 33. Level 38 consists of two areas. These areas are not defined by borders, and there are multiple of each area within this level. They are known as the interior and the exterior. The interior is a term for any locations that are inside areas. These areas are the most common of level 38 and will likely be the first area you come across. Due to the effect from level 12, taking pictures of these areas is almost impossible. The following properties have been observed to occur randomly through the interior. The general room layout of level zero. The flickering lights of level one. The locked doors and pipes of level two. The metal gate from level 3, the windows from level 4, the decor from level 5, immense darkness from level 6, the gravitational effects from the first room in level 7, of level 8, the image corruption property of level 12, the high number of floors seen on level 13, the engine sounds of level 15, imprints on level 17, certain rooms will resemble childhood experiences of level 18. The brittle floor of level 19. Machinery of level 20. The middle of level 21 can be found occasionally. The entity found on level 20 has been known to inhabit level 38 and occasionally changes the layout of rooms. Caverns and trees similar to level 23. A blurry view outside of windows similar to the sky of level 24. The size of each floor is the same size as level 25. The confusing layout of level 26, such as random stairs, doors, and hallways that lead to nowhere. The occasional spring of water within any cave area of level 8 or level 23, resembling the main spring of level 27. The smell of pizza 
Sorry. 